In this lecture, we shall discuss the jurisdiction of the High Courts. We shall discuss the jurisdiction of the High Courts. We shall discuss the jurisdiction of the High Courts and the Ghana legal systems and methods. Now you recall that under Article 126 of the Constitution of Ghana, that under Article 126 of the Constitution of Ghana, we indicated that the Superior Court of Judicature shall consist of the Supreme Court, the Court of Appeal, the High Court, and the Regional Tribunals. The High Court and the Regional Tribunals. So what then is the jurisdiction of the High Court? What then is the jurisdiction of the High Court? Now, there are different types of jurisdiction. We can either have original jurisdiction of the High Court. We can also look at the exclusive original jurisdiction of the High Court when we are talking about the enforcement of fundamental human rights and freedoms. We can also look at the appellate jurisdiction of the High Court. And then we shall look at the supervisory jurisdiction of the High Court. So we shall look at the original jurisdiction. Then we'll look at the exclusive original jurisdiction of the High Court. We shall look at the appellate jurisdiction. And we shall look at the supervisory jurisdiction. So the first point of call, the jurisdiction of the High Court. Let us look at Article 140 of the 1992 Constitution of Ghana. Article 140 of the 1992 Constitution of Ghana. And this is what it says. And I quote. The High Court shall, subject to the provisions of this Constitution, have jurisdiction in all matters, and in particular, in civil and criminal matters, and such original, appellate, and other jurisdiction as may be conferred on it by this constitution or any other law. The High Court shall, subject to the provisions of this constitution, have jurisdiction in all matters, and in particular, in civil and criminal matters, and such original appellate and other jurisdiction as may be conferred on it by this constitution or any other law. Meaning that under Article 140 of the Constitution, we are told that the High Court has jurisdiction in all matters, and in particular, in civil and criminal matters. For this reason, some lawyers have described the High Court as the most powerful court in Ghana. Because every case that comes to our courts, every case that, in the majority of the cases that may end up at the Court of Appeal and Supreme Court, they must definitely begin through the High Court. If it's a land matter, High Court. If it's a criminal matter, High Court. Debt recovery, High Court. Matrimonial matter, High Court, child custody, High Court. But you can't go to the Supreme Court for a child custody issue. You can also not go to the Supreme Court if you want or do, if you want divorce. You can't go to the Supreme Court and say that you have this land matter, it's a very good land matter, so you are coming to the Supreme Court. You can't go there. You can't say that you want to obtain an injunction against this person on your land, so you are going to the Supreme Court. For all those matters, is the High Court that you have to go to. Because the Constitution says that the High Court shall, subject to the provisions of this Constitution, have jurisdiction in all matters, and in particular, in civil and criminal matters. So apart from those jurisdictions that have been taken from the High Court by the Constitution, for example, apart from the jurisdiction to enforce the Constitution, which has been given to the Supreme Court under Article 2 and Article 130, Apart from presidential election petitions, which have been given to the Supreme Court under Article 64. In other words, apart from those other jurisdictions that have been taken away from the High Court, 
and given to other courts. Every other matter the high court has jurisdiction in it. That's why Article 140 says the high court shall have jurisdiction in all matters, and in particular in civil and criminal matters, and such other and such original appellate and other jurisdiction as may be conferred on it by this constitution or any other law. So as far as the jurisdiction of the High Court is concerned, we know Article 140 that says the High Court has jurisdiction in all matters. Then we have Article 5, Section 15 of the Court Act, 1993, Acts 459. Section 15 of the Court Act, 1993, Acts 459. This is what Section 15 of the Court Act says, and I quote. In accordance with Article 140 of the Constitution, the High Court has subject to the Constitution A, an original jurisdiction in all matters. B, an appellate jurisdiction in the judgment of the circuit court in the trial of a criminal case. C, an appellate jurisdiction in a judgment of a district court or a juvenile court. D. Jurisdiction to enforce the fundamental human rights and freedoms guaranteed by this constitution. And then F. Any other jurisdiction conferred by the constitution, this act, or any other enactment. So section 15 of the court act 1993, act 459, lays down the jurisdiction of the high court. It says in accordance with article 140 of the constitution, the high court has subject to the constitution A, an original jurisdiction in all matters. When you say original, it means the court of first instance. It has original jurisdiction in all matters. And it goes ahead to say that when you're appealing against a judgment of the circuit court, in a criminal case, your appeal shall lie to the high court. When you're appealing against a judgment of the circuit court in a criminal case, you appeal to the high court. And then we have C saying that an appellate jurisdiction in the judgment of a district court or a juvenile court. So if you go to the district court and then there's a judgment, and you're appealing against that judgment, you can appeal to the high court. That was section 15C of the court act says. It says the high court has an appellate jurisdiction in the judgment of a district court or juvenile court. And then B, we are told that the High Court has jurisdiction to enforce the fundamental human rights and freedoms guaranteed by this constitution. So if you want to know the jurisdiction of the High Court, look at Article 140 and Section 15 of the Court Act. Article 140 of the 1992 Constitution and Section 15 of the Court Act, 1993, Act 459. Now let us throw more light on the exclusive original jurisdiction of the High Court in enforcing fundamental human rights. Now, if a person says that his fundamental human rights has been breached, and this breach in question, you are saying it is you, 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 the individual, you, this human being, you, this individual, you, your rights are being breached, your fundamental human rights are being breached. And you want to bring an action to enforce that fundamental human rights. If you have a personal interest in the outcome of the matter, if it is a breach which is affecting you directly, you can bring an action to the high court and apply for redress. And this is what we get from Article 33 of the 1992 Constitution, the case of the number two, the Attorney General. Reported in 1998 99 Supreme Court of Ghana law report at page 753, and also Fediat 
versus public universities of Ghana. Now, this is what Article 33 plus 1 says, and I quote. Where a person alleges that a provision of this constitution on the fundamental human rights and freedoms has been, or has been, or is likely to be contravened in relation to him, or is likely to be contravened in relation to him, then without prejudice to any other action that is lawfully available, that person, that person, that person may apply to the High Court for redress. That person, so that person who is saying that his fundamental human rights is being breached, it is that person who may apply to the High Court for redress. In other words, if my human rights have been breached and I am complaining, you cannot bring an action to the High Court on my behalf. That person, me, the very person who is complaining that my human rights have been breached, on the strength of Article 33 Clause 1, and also the case of Edu Zen number 2 versus Attorney General, reported in 1998-99 Supreme Court of Ghana Law Report at page 753. It is that person whose right is being infringed, that individual himself, is the one who may bring an action to the High Court for a declaration to that effect. So this is about the exclusive original jurisdiction of the High Court. Now let's go look at section 15 of the court as again. It says the High Court shall have an appellate jurisdiction in the judgment of the circuit court in a trial of a criminal case. So far we look at the original jurisdiction the High Court has in all matters, as we saw in Article 140 and section 15. We have also seen the exclusive original jurisdiction the High Court has in entertaining applications for enforcing fundamental human rights. Now we are saying that the High Court also has appellate jurisdiction when you are appealing against a judgment of the circuit court in a criminal case. And you can see this too under section 15 of the Court Act, which says that the High Court has an appellate jurisdiction in a judgment of the circuit court in the trial of a criminal case. So if you go to the circuit court in a criminal matter and then you lose and you want to appeal, you appeal to the high court. It's a criminal matter. Again, if you want to appeal against a judgment of the district court too, you may appeal to the high court. But let's look at section 21 of the court act. It reads as follows, and I quote, Section 21 of the Court Act 1993-459. It reads as follows, and I quote. The prosecution or a person convicted of an offense in a criminal case tried by a circuit court or tried by a district or juvenile court may appeal against the judgment to the higher court. The prosecution or a person convicted of an offense in a criminal case tried by the circuit court or also tried by the district or juvenile court, you may appeal against the judgment to the high court. So if it's a criminal case at the circuit court, criminal case at the district court, criminal case at the juvenile court, all of them, your appeals are lie to the high court. So if you are appealing against a criminal case of the circuit court, the appeal goes to the high court. If you are appealing against a criminal case or civil case at the district court, your appeal goes to the high court. But remember, if you are appealing against a civil case from the circuit court, that one, your appeal goes to the court of appeal. That is what I'm emphasizing. That it's only a criminal case pending at the circuit court that you are appealing against. If you are appealing against a criminal case from the circuit court, it is that one that will go to the high court. But if it's a civil case at the circuit court, the appeal goes to the court of appeal. If it's a criminal case at the district court, the appeal goes to the high court.
high court. If it's a civil case at the district court, appeal goes to the high court. If you look at section 21, it says a person aggrieved by a judgment of a district court in a civil matter, that person may appeal against the judgment to the high court. So if it's a civil matter too, you have from the district court, you may appeal to the high court. Again, if you are appealing against an interlocutory order or decision made or given by the district court, as for that one, you may appeal against the decision to the high court, but you must first seek the leave of the district court. And when the district court refuses to grant leave, you may seek the leave of the high court. In other words, if the district court grants an interlocutory order and you want to appeal against that interlocutory order to the high court, you must first go to the district court. Tell them, district court, I want to appeal against your order. Please grant me leave, grant me permission so that I can appeal against your judgment. If the district court says that they refuse your permission, you can repeat that application at the high court. And go and seek for that permission. So, if it is an interlocutory order or decision given by the district court, then that's one place you cannot appeal as a right to the high court. You must first obtain the leave of the district court before you can appeal against that decision. And then let's look at the distinction between appeals as of right to the high court and appeals by leave. You remember we mentioned that if you have a decision of the circuit court or a juvenile court or district court in a criminal case, that way you can appeal to the high court. So if the circuit court is adjudicating upon a criminal case, you can appeal to the high court straight. In the circuit court is adjudicating on a criminal case, you can appeal to the high court. The district court criminal case, you can appeal to the high court. Juvenile court criminal case, you can appeal to the high court. Also, appeals against judgment of the district court, that one too, you can go to the high court. Appeals against judgment of a district court, that one too, you can go to the high court. And so, these are appeals as a right. But there are some appeals that you must seek the leave of the district court before going. And they are in respect of interlocutory appeals. So like we said, if there's an interlocutory order or decision made by the district court, that's one you must first go and seek the leave of the district court before you can appeal against that one. So, if you are appealing against an interlocutory order of the district court, you can appeal against that interlocutory order to the high court, but you must first seek the leave of the district court. And then if the district court refuses, you can seek the leave of the high court. So by way of recap, as far as we have dealt with the jurisdiction of the high court, so far this is what we have done. We have dealt with the jurisdiction of the high court in all matters, that is the original jurisdiction the high court has in all matters, as we saw in Article 140. We've seen the exclusive original jurisdiction of the high court in enforcing fundamental human rights, as seen in the Article 33 of the Constitution. Then we have seen the appellate jurisdiction of the High Court, that is in respect of appeals from the Circuit Court in criminal cases, and also appeals from the District Court, whether civil or criminal. The last jurisdiction we shall look at is the supervisory jurisdiction of the High Court. The supervisory jurisdiction of the High Court. And that is found under Article 141 of the 1992 Constitution of Ghana. Article 141 
of the 1992 Constitution of Ghana. And this is what Article 141 says, and I quote, the High Court shall have supervisory jurisdiction over all lower courts and any lower adjudication authority. And may, in the exercise of that jurisdiction, issue orders and directions for the purpose of securing the enforcement of the supervisory powers. The High Court shall have supervisory jurisdiction over all lower courts and any lower adjudication authority. Emphasis all lower courts and any lower adjudicating authority. So, all lower courts and any lower adjudication authority. The High Court shall have supervisory jurisdiction. It's not enough for you to know that the High Court has supervisory jurisdiction. You must know the people at the bodies against whom the High Court has that supervisory jurisdiction. It's against all lower courts. And you know the lower courts. They are the circuit courts, district courts, high court, uh, this, uh, circuit court, district courts, juvenile courts, national house of chiefs, regional house of chiefs, and traditional councils. So the High Court has supervisory jurisdiction over all lower courts. And the lower courts here are the circuit courts, district courts, juvenile courts, and the chief tenancy tribunals. So as the one forty one says, the High Court has supervisory jurisdiction over all lower courts and adjudication authorities. And this is also reproduced under Section 16 of the Courts Act of 1993, Act 459. And it says as follows, and I quote, in accordance with Article 141 of the Constitution, the High Court has supervisory jurisdiction over the lower courts and the lower adjudication authority. And may, in the exercise of that jurisdiction, issue orders and directions, including orders in the nature of habeas corpus, sentiwari, mandamus, prohibition, and co-oranto, for the purpose of enforcing or securing the enforcement of the supervisory powers. So under Section 16 of the Court Act 1993, we are told that the High Court also has supervisory jurisdiction over the lower courts and lower adjudication authorities. Remember, I'm saying it's not enough for you to know that the High Court has supervisory jurisdiction. You need to know the bodies against whom the High Court has that supervisory jurisdiction. It's against lower courts, lower adjudicating authorities, and lower courts and lower adjudicating authorities. Then we go ahead to look at a recap of what we have done so far about the jurisdiction of the High Court. We said the High Court has original jurisdiction in all matters. They have exclusive original jurisdiction in the enforcement of fundamental human rights. That's what we saw in Article 33. And we've seen that they also have appellate jurisdiction. That in the criminal matter from the circuit court, you appeal to the High Court. In a civil and criminal matter at the district court, you appeal to the High Court. And we've seen that the High Court also has supervisory jurisdiction over all lower courts and any lower adjudication authority. So this is where we shall draw the curtains on the jurisdiction of the High Court. On the jurisdiction of the High Court as established under Article 126 of the Constitution. This is where we shall draw the curtains on the jurisdiction of the High Court on the jurisdiction of the High Court as established under Article 126 of the Constitution. Thank you.